Hello and welcome to the channel. About a month ago, Next.js 13.4 was released, and there were significant changes to the framework, which are namely the app router, turbo pack, and server actions. If you install the latest version of Next now, you can opt out of not installing the app router, where most of the changes were made, and you can carry on building your application as you used to. But if you install the app router, you will notice the entire file structure has been changed. Here I have placed both the installations side by side. The one on the left has the app router installed on it and the right one does not have the app router. In the previous versions for the ones without the app router, there is an API folder. Any file in that folder will act as an endpoint. But a new version does not have the API folder. Now you can write server side code directly in the components and also create endpoints. You will also see the app.js, document.js and the index.js files are missing. In the new version, the layout.js file acts somewhat similar to app.js and document.js files. And the page.js file is similar to the index.js file. The routing system has entirely changed. In the earlier version, if you create any TypeScript or JavaScript file which exports a valid React component, the next would automatically create a route and server page. But in the next but in the new version, folders are used to define routes. Here you create a folder, the name of the folder X is the route name, and each folder will contain a page.js file, which is the only file that will be publicly accessible. The page.js file will export a React component that will serve the UI for that route. The route folder may also contain style sheets, other components, and other static files. To create nested routes, all you have to do is create subfolders inside the parent route, and each folder must have its own page.js file that will serve the UI for that route. Here I have created two folders, one named product and the other services. In the services page, I will create a function that will return a title of services. I will copy this and paste it in the products page and I will check if the routing is working properly or not. If the parent folder contains a layout.js file, it can be shared to its nested routes. The layout.js file exports a React component. The component accepts a children prop that will populate it with a child layout if one exists if we create a component called nav and import it in the layout.js file then the component will be available throughout the route bounds but will not be available in the index.js space To create a dynamic route, we have to create a folder and place the name of the folder inside square brackets and create a page.js file. Suppose there are multiple users and you want to display the user information by using their ID, then user should be the main folder and the ID within square brackets should be the name of the subfolder. And the subfolder will contain the page.js file. If you want to retrieve the ID from the URL that in the paste.js file passing argument params within curly braces, then in the HTML return params to the ID within parentheses. For routing and navigation, you can either use the use outer hook or the link component. To use the link component, import link from next link and to use use outer hook import use router from next navigation, not next router. Wrap the HTML element in, in link text and pass href prop containing the path to the page you want to navigate to. This will be slash about slash product
for use order we will be using an on click event listener to navigate and use a method called push then on click router.push and within parentheses slash about and slash services now as soon as I saved a file next will throw an error stating that event listeners cannot be used in server components. This is because in next 13.4 all components are by default server components unless we specify that they are client side components by writing use client and certain properties can only be used with client components. Also react hooks like use state and use effect cannot be used in server components. In the earlier versions of Next.js, there used to be an API folder where any file inside the folder is an endpoint, but that has changed now. Also, if you had to fetch data from an external server, you would have to use an use state hook and then render it. Now you can write server side code in the component itself and simply fetch the data and render it. Let me show you by facing some dummy JSON data. I will first go to the website called dummyjson.com and copy this URL. Then in the about.js file, I will declare a variable called info and then fetch the data from the URL. The fetch function or any server side function in Next.js should be now an asynchronous function. Then convert the response to a JSON. If you click on the show output button in the website, you will observe that response is an object that contains an array of user data called users. I will store this data in another array using the spread operator. After that, I will render the first and last name and the phone numbers of users in the array by, my, by mapping through it. Now let's build a UI for it. It will be just a list of items and I will use the element and the ID of the each of the user as the key and I will to display flex the first name element of first name within parentheses sorry within curly braces this will be the last name and then the phone number element of phone save it and go to about now you no longer have to use the use effect hook and you also do not have to use get static props either if you go to view space view page source the html is available to the search engines which means that the page will be indexed by search engine without the use of get static props Okay, we have fetch data, but what about sending data to the backend? Let's create a form and a database folder. I have installed Mongoose and created a model for a list of to-dos. Now I will connect to MongoDB and then create a form with an input field and submit button. In the earlier versions, we used to import the use state hook and update the states with form data by using on-sense event listeners, but now forms are strictly server-side components and thus we cannot use them. So what we can do is use server actions provided by Next. But before we can do that, we have to make some changes to the next.config.js file. You have to enable experimental features for server actions and server components external packages for Mongoose. If you are using an older version of Mongoose, then this may not be necessary. Let's go to the main page of JS file and import a to-do model. And I have to make the function asynchronous. Now wait, Mongoose to connect to connect to the Mongoose database. And one more thing, I, now I can just write local host and the name of the collection. I have to write the local IP address that is 127.0.0.1 and colon 270017 then the use new url will be true and the use unified topology will also be true
next create a function this function will save the new to do and this will be also be asynchronous function now let's go to the ui part plus k margin 10 and to give vertical space between the different elements so 5 to should space y5 it's on text this will be create to do and it will be simple form of just one input tag in the input here we have to give it a name so I will give the name is to do and this is necessary here because that's how we, I will be able to retract the data from the input field as we won't be able to use use state hooks then a button to submit this is give it a padding of 2 and a background color of yellow on hover the background color will change to orange okay we'll give it a break to display the button on the next line now i will have to give the use server within here the agreement data is the form data and from data.get to do is the name of the input element this will get it will give us the value of the input now i have saved the data in the mongo in the mongo database in order to call the function as we cannot use on click event listeners we have to instead use dx action proc to invoke a server action on the form and call the function so the data is saved now to display the data we will simply use the mongoose function to do the find and render the data using the map function now i will create the ui to display the data from the database I will map over the to do's element dot to do and the key unique key will be the ID of the element or to do. See it? Okay. Now if you create a new to do you notice that the UI does not get updated automatically. There are two ways of updating the UI. One, we can use redirect from next navigation, and the other, use revalidate from next case. Both of them will update the UI, but there is a difference between the two. Redirect will reload the entire page, that's why the input field becomes empty after submitting the form. But revalidate will update the specific state routes without reloading the entire page. This is why the input text remains retains the previously filled data. Now let's see if I uh, comment out this new server directive and what happens save it it will give an error that functions cannot be passed directly to a client component unless you explicitly expose it by marking it with your server okay so by this is a client component now by default so instead of giving a form action what if i give it on click
No, it don't still work. It will give the same error. So if I remove the comment, save it again. Now, now it works. So this means that on click event listeners and form submissions can be used only with servers server components let's say i decide to use port on react and use it right you are importing a component that needs to use state it only works in client component but none of its parents are marked with use client so they are server components by default so if you really need to use client react components means react proper hooks like use state or use effect then it is better if you use a create a component separately and then import the component into the into the server side component so this was a brief introduction to next stage 13.4 and in the next video i will be making a cloud application in next 13.4 with the app router installed and mongodb so i will see you on the next one then